Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about investing as a non-resident. And, you know, we've come across this uh, situation actually quite a bit in the last few weeks. Um, about a month ago, we posted a video about collecting OAS and CPP abroad. And of course, that triggered a lot of views from people that are living abroad or are looking to live abroad in retirement. And there's a big, big issue that's come up when talking to these people, doing some research that I think is very important. And there's an action. If you plan to uh, retire abroad and become a non-resident, there's a very important action you need to take with your investment account before you leave Canada. So we're going to go through that in this video. Before we jump into the content, if you're sitting on the sidelines and you know, you're kind of doing a DIY plan or DIY investing with no plan, um, and you're not kind of sure where to start, you've been watching our videos and you like you know, the RSP meltdown, the tax strategy, the maximization of income, all that, but just don't know where to start, we do offer fee-for-service financial planning. Uh, we'll put a link below. It's parallelwealth.com slash planning. Check that out. It may be a good fit for you. Again, if you're sitting on the sidelines, um, you know, you don't work with a financial planner, you're kind of doing the DIY thing, or maybe you've worked with a planner, you're working with a bank, and you're just not happy with what you're getting, and you don't feel like you have a clear plan in place. If you need a clear plan, check out our services. We've done many, many, many of these this year, and we have 100% a success rate or, or people, clients are happy you know the end product answers every single question gives them a clear roadmap maximizes income and minimizes taxes so if that's you if you're sitting on the sideline need some help check that out and reach out to our office so if you become a non-resident in retirement or maybe you're watching this you're already a non-resident and you hold investment accounts in canada it's going to be very important that you take a few actions before you leave Canada uh, and you know enter a new country and, and become resident of a new country. Now, if you are invested in mutual funds, and we're going to target mutual funds in this video because that's the key point here. If you're invested in mutual funds, which is the majority of Canadians, and you leave Canada, so let's say you have an RSP sitting at a major bank or a financial institution invested in one or many mutual funds. Let's say you leave Canada and you become, you know, a permanent resident of Spain. Okay. So now you're in Spain and you have an RSP sitting at, you know, your financial institution in Canada in three mutual funds. Okay. The problem is, is there's some rules around non-residency for mutual funds and the inability to actually transact on your behalf. Okay. So if you're sitting in Spain as a resident of Spain and you, you know, contact your financial institution here in Canada and say, Hey, look, you know, I need to sell a little bit or I need to sell a lot of it. Okay. Now I'm going to go through an extreme example, but it's a real life example of someone that reached out to us and we're actually, you know, walking through the process with them. Now they're back in Canada just to kind of clean this up. So this is a, uh, you know, a female in retirement, uh, in Spain. Okay. So she wasn't a non-resident of Canada quite yet, but she was in Spain when COVID hit. Okay. So when COVID hit, she's sitting in Spain, her money's sitting here in Canada. Um, she, she panicked a bit or, or, or was very concerned with what was going on in the markets. She phoned her financial institution, which was holding mutual funds in RSP. And she said, you know what? I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm worried. Sell everything. Okay. So they could take that order over the phone or over email. Okay. Now, fast forward a week after that. Okay. She kind of took some time, decompressed from it and said, you know what? Sitting in cash probably isn't the best thing for me with this. She phoned her financial institution back and said, can you please put my money back into, you know, the mutual funds? And they said, no, we can't. You have to be in Canada for us to take that order. OK, now that's a major issue because now she's stuck in Spain. I mean, you know <laughs> what we've gone through the last year and a half is an extreme example. But again, do you want to have to fly back to Canada to just put a transaction through on your investment account? Probably not. It's you know, quite expensive. And, in, and very inconvenient as well. So if for this client, she actually ended up just sitting in cash all the way till today as we chat. Uh, I'm meeting with her later this week. Uh, she's back in Canada to deal with these things before she actually goes back to Spain to become a permanent resident there and a non-resident in Canada. Now, any financial institution or most financial institutions that sell mutual funds, if you become a non-resident of Canada, they will not be able to tr transact on your account, okay? They can put the sell through, they will not be able to put new buys through, and they often won't do transactions like switch from one account or one fund to another, okay? It's very limited in nature, and most financial institutions will actually ask you to leave their firm when you leave the country, okay? So if you plan to become a non-resident of Canada or even live abroad for a period of time, 
be aware of how your investments are managed, okay? If you're in mutual funds or even ETFs to that extent, there's some limits, mutual funds specifically. And why it's important is because I think it's about 80 to 90% of Canadians are invested in mutual funds. If you have less than about $2 million and you're in a major financial institution or bank, you're probably sitting in some or all of mutual funds. Okay, that, that's just a default investment for them. It's a pool product. But again, when you leave Canada, whether it's going for a few months or leaving as a non-resident, you could have some issues making a transaction in your account. Okay, so if you're leaving for a few months, let's say you you know head down to Palm Springs for three, four, or five months of the of the year in the winter time, contact your financial institution and ask them. You know, are am I able to put in a transaction, to do a trade, anything like that, okay? Most likely they'll say, yes, you can put in a sale, you know, can eat money out. But if you wanna move from fund A to fund B, can't do it, okay? If you want to invest new money, can't do it, you gotta be in Canada, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, if you become a non-resident, you need to make sure that you clean this up before you go, okay? If you plan to become a non-resident, there's a lot of things you need to clean up. This is one of them, and it's a major one. I mean, your assets, your RSP or whatever investment accounts you have are probably going to fund not only, you know, getting out there, but your ongoing lifestyle in the future, okay? So that's a huge part of your retirement, and you need to make sure that you lock this up before you go away. Now, what are your options, right? That's a big thing. It's like, okay, Adam, that's great. I, I can't invest in mutual funds, so where do I go, okay? There's a few options. Um, you can check with some firms, uh, online firms <clears throat> that do ETFs, check with Equestrade, Wells Simple, that kind of thing. I still think the majority of countries that you're probably going to, they will not do any transactions for you, okay? Um, if you have over 300,000 of investments, a lot of the direct, um, like a separately managed account, which is when an investment firm buys individual stocks for you, that's the point where you wanna get to, okay? So if you have 300,000, you want to find an investment council firm that can manage your money on a discretionary basis. And all that means is, look, you're giving money to a management firm, then they're not buying mutual funds for you. They're buying individual stocks. Okay, So we do this for our clients, um, you know, my own personal money. We send it to a firm out of Winnipeg, manage most of our client assets, uh, BCB Asset Management, and they're able to manage client accounts that are overseas. So this client that's planning to relocate to Spain, we're gonna move her assets to BCV. BCV can then actively manage it, even while she's a non-resident, because they're not buying mutual funds or buying individual stocks, they can actually take transactions from her. So if she needs money, uh, if she wants to make some changes, whatever it is, invest new money, um, but they can actively manage it. And that's so important because you don't wanna leave the country and either you know get stuck in an investment that's not really great long-term. Markets change, right? Your investment should change with it. So make sure they can. The other thing is that she needs to transact, right? If she panics again and sells out um, and then wants to buy back in, she needs to have the ability to buy back in. And I think, you know, part of partnering with our firm as well as the investments is to call me first so that she doesn't panic and sell out of her investments in the first place. But a lot of you have, and we talked to so many of you, you know, during 2020 that just liquidated investments and then got back in at the wrong time and, and it's been a bit of a mess, but hey, you're back in the markets and doing better than you would have otherwise. So if you're planning to leave the country, again, very important, make sure you check into this. And it could be, again, for a few months for travel or it could be permanently, okay? If it is permanently, the likelihood that your investment account can be transact on uh, when you leave is very small, okay? You need to find uh, an investment firm that buys individual stocks. And again, you can shop around out there Go ask different firms, interview them, see if they're able to actively manage your account on an ongoing basis if you become a non-resident. When you're doing your due diligence and finding a firm that can act actively manage your accounts when you uh, go abroad, be aware that it's going to depend what country you go to. Uh, not all firms, even BCB Asset Management has a list of firms or uh, of countries they can't deal with, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna show that here. Every firm's gonna be a little bit different. And a lot of the, the custodians, so like National Bank's a custodian, uh, Fidelity's a custodian. These are the people that kind of, are the firms that hold money, uh, clients' assets for security, safety, that kind of thing. And a lot of times they'll say, you know, so BCV uses uh, National Bank. And National Bank will tell BCV, look, you know, you can have 25 clients in this country, or you can have 10 in this country, and then you're capped out, okay? 
So every firm's a little bit different. They might have maximums per country and they may have reached that maximum already, all depending. So that's why I say go talk to whatever firm you're already dealing with. Talk to them, see what your options are if you go abroad. Talk to some different firms. Make sure you don't get locked into an investment or a sale or a transaction that you don't want to get locked into, okay? Um, again, we've reached out, so Philippines, Spain, Mexico, we've had these clients reach out to us and say, look, you know, my bank or my financial institution won't help me. They're, they're, they're pretty much locking up our accounts when we leave the country. We need an option. There are options out there. That's the point of this video, okay? You, you don't have to say locked into one mutual fund at your financial institution. There are options out there. Again, if you have under 300,000, I'll be honest with you, it's gonna be a lot harder to find an investment firm to do this you may have to do more of a DIY option, okay? You may have to open it up investment account and do your own transaction. But again, make sure that if you open up at see like RBC Direct Investing or something like that, when you're a non-resident, are you able to transact yourself even in that account, okay? These are the questions you need to ask to make sure that you don't get stuck when you're abroad. The last thing I wanna to touch on here is if you're doing an investment while you're living abroad, okay? You become a non-resident, okay? and your investments are sitting here, take a look at your fees for what you're getting. Again, I'll always go back to fees. I think people are paying way too high to fees in this world. Um, there's there's a purpose for fees, right? If, if someone's doing a job, you can compensate them fairly, okay? Now, if you live abroad, are you getting your annual review with your planner, okay? Or is your uh, portfolio being actively managed, okay? Remember, this person I'm talking about in Spain, sure, she panicked and sold in, in March, March, April, 2020. But she was there before that, um, you know, her bank or financial institution was doing absolutely no work for her. It, her money was just sitting there. They weren't even allowed to transact on her account or give advice, but they were still charging her a 2.4% fee on her account, okay? That's concerning, okay? If you leave the country, make sure that whoever's investing in your account can actively do that if they're gonna charge your fee for that. And if you're paying for planning advice, so if you're paying over 1%, that means you're probably paying for planning advice. Are you getting planning? Are you getting an annual review and touch points and all that kind of stuff? Make sure that you're getting what you're paying for. Way, way, way too many of you watching this video are just paying fees and have no idea what you're paying for, what you're supposed to be getting, okay? Again, if you're paying for planning advice, make sure you're getting planning. If you're paying for investing advice, make sure you're getting investing. And again, I did a video last week. If you're, you know, you should be paying about 1% for each. And once you hit about three to 500,000 in assets, that should drop down to about 1.5. 0.75 uh, for the investing side, 0.75 for the planning side. Once you're above about half a million dollars, below that is probably gonna be 1%, 1%, okay? Uh, again, if you're moving abroad, if you're traveling abroad, check into your, you know, options around trading, transacting around your account to make sure that you don't get stuck overseas with cash sitting in your investment portfolio because you can't actually invest. You can't give a trading authorization over the phone or through email. So I hope this video helped you out. Again, it, there's so many of you that are looking to either, you know, go down south for three, four, five months of the year, this could affect you. Or if you're planning to actually retire abroad, this will affect you as well, obviously even greater. Make sure you check into this, right? If this video helps one, two, three of you, then perfect, it's done its job. There's going to be some of you that ignore this advice, you go travel or live abroad, and your investment account is gonna be basically put into cash and then left in cash until you can get back to Canada and give trading authorization, okay? So make sure you take care of this before you leave the country so that you don't get stuck sitting in cash when the market's taking a run. So hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.